Hi, everyone. Tony Costa from Toronto Apologetics. So glad that you can join us. I'd like to remind all our viewers to uh, subscribe to Toronto Apologetics, to like the video, and to share the video. Today, we're going to be looking at a short clip of a Muslim imam who addresses the issue of the age of Aisha, uh, Muhammad's youngest bride. And um, he's going to discuss the age of Aisha and uh, he is going to basically say, um, we need to throw out the Hadith. Um, now, this is a very interesting approach, because what you'll find is, in, among Muslim apologists, you'll find those who argue that, that yes, Aisha was six years old, uh, yes, uh, uh, nine years old when Muhammad consummated the marriage with her at 54. And so you have people like Zachary Knight totally admitting that, um, and 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 many others, um, uh, Dr. Kadi and so forth. And then you'll have others like uh, Dr. Shabir Ali and others say, no, 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 no. She was she was much older, much older than that. And, and so you have Muslims on both on both camps. They can't even come to an agreement on this. They're they're both disagreeing with each other. Uh, and yet we're told that Islam is mubin, that it is clear. On all matters and yet they can't even agree on the age of muhammad's youngest bride and so what i want to do folks is i want to share this video from TikTok. and um in this video we have uh sheikh imran hussein um uh, this is the same imam uh by the way uh sorry the same sheikh by the way who uh believes jesus actually was crucified on the cross and that he died and that god raised him um and and so you may want to check that in my uh, my uh, YouTube channel as well. Uh, so uh, I'm going to let Sheikh Imran Hussein uh, say what he has to say, and then um, I will pause when necessary to make any comments. So uh, let's listen in. This has to do with um, the age of Aisha. Can a six-year-old child qualify as a woman? No. No. Uh, I think everyone hearing my voice would agree with me. A six-year-old child is not a woman. A six-year-old female child um, is a prepubescent child before menstruation, before puberty. Uh, and so a six-year-old child is not a woman. A six-year-old child is 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 a child. And so on that, I, I think, I, I can't see why anyone would even challenge this. You're very quiet now, eh? Uh, I don't know. Uh, again, very interesting. Uh, why is uh, Sheikh Hussein's uh, audience so quiet on this? A very simple answer to that question. You're very quiet. You're very quiet now, aren't you? Well, that's what it says in Sahih Bukhari. Yes, sir. That's exactly what it says in Sahih Bukhari. And in uh, uh, Sunan Abu Dawood as well. Uh, that Aisha was considered to be marriageable, that is able to marry at the age of six, and then and then consummate the marriage when she was nine. It says in Sahih Bukhari, and no one knows who's going to tell the cat. The Prophet Muhammad married Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and her when she was six years of age. That's right. That's what it says. That's what it says. Uh, go to sunnah.com. You could read the hadith online for yourself. You could see it for yourself. Um, just do a search on, on Aisha and her age, six years of age, six years old, nine years old, and you'll find the hadith. It's, it's right there. And so what this Sheikh is saying is, is absolutely true, that Muhammad, according to Sahih Bukhari and Sunan Abu Dawud, Muhammad married Aisha when she was six years of age. He's telling the truth. So why are there Muslim apologists that will dispute this? Because they know that this is a very embarrassing event. This is a very embarrassing story. And so the, they'll do everything in their power to deny this hadith, even though it is sahih, it is sound. It is irrelevant 
that the hadith goes on to say that the marriage was consummated when she was nine. That well, there you go. It's irrelevant. Well, why? Because she's still a child. Six years old, nine years old, you're still a child. And so the one thing I can applaud this, this sheikh for is that he is saying, hey, that's what our sources say. I'm not going to deny it. that's what the sources say. It's there. And though I'm not a Muslim, I'm a Christian, I could I could read the hadith, I could read what it says, but at least Sheikh Hussein is honest about the evidence. And that's what I respect about him. Now, I think there's this this is gonna lead to a can of worms eventually, but but at least he's honest with the evidence. That's irrelevant. What is relevant is that the marriage took place when she was six. There it is. So the marriage contract was was filled, was signed when she was six years old. So let me ask you a question, Muslim friends. This is a, a very honest question I'm going to ask you. If you have a six-year-old daughter, be honest with this. If you have a six-year-old daughter, would you give your six-year-old daughter in marriage to a 54-year-old man? Yes or no? Yes or no? Your little girl, six years old, playing with her Barbie dolls, playing with dolls, which is what little girls do. And some 50-year-old man says, I find your daughter attractive, and I, I want your daughter, I want to marry her, and so forth. Would you, from the bottom of your heart, would you give your six-year-old daughter to a 54-year-old man? I sure wouldn't. I wouldn't give my daughter, a six year old, my six year old daughter, to a 54 year old man because that is not only disgusting, it's absolutely repugnant. And I think if you listen to your reason, your logic, you would come to the same conclusion. If this is true, then it has become Sunnah. Sunnah. What does that mean? The Sunnah is the way, the tradition. The example, the model of the prophet, because it happened to Muhammad taking a six-year-old child and consummated the marriage when she was nine. That means he has built, he has basically enacted a an example, a model that this is now permissible to other Muslim men. Muslim men can also do the same, and they have taking child brides. That is what it means to become the Sunnah, the way, the model of the Prophet. It's where we get the word Sunni from. Sunnah, to marry six-year-old girls. There it is. That it is Sunnah. It's part of the model. It's the example. The Prophet has set the example, and therefore, Muslim men can do the same. He's saying that. This, this sheikh is openly admitting this. And he's right. Absolutely right. And if you believe that this is true, I ask the question, why aren't you marrying a six-year-old? Amen. Amen. Exactly, Sheikh Hussein. If you believe this is true, if you believe that that the Sunnah has been established, that Muhammad took a six-year-old girl, uh, married her, and then and took her to bed at, at the age of nine, why are you not marrying six-year-old girls? Why are you, Muslim men, not marrying six-year-old girls? Legitimate question. That's the same question I was asking about a man giving a six-year-old girl, six-year-old daughter to a 54-year-old man. He's he's totally right. Which one of you will marry a six-year-old? Nobody. Amen. 100%. Why? Because we know that it's a child. We know it's a child. So why did Muhammad do it? Even her father, Aisha's father, Abu Bakr, uh, said to him, but you're, you're like a brother to me. Why would you take my daughter? And he basically said that our relationship is different. We're 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 related in Islam, but but he had rights to his child. And yet, when it came to Muhammad's own daughter Fatima, and and others wanted her, he he wanted to delay her her marriage until she was a little older. So, different strokes for different folks. I guess prophethood has its privileges. No. 
That's where integrity is today. Yep, one hundred percent. That's where integrity is today. It's about integrity and respect and modesty. No one takes a child like that. That is absolute. That is that is that is abominable. And it is pedophilia, whether we like it or not. It is pedophilia. That is where integrity is today. You say, yes, it is a sahih hadith, but none of you are prepared to marry. None, none, none. No, none of you are, are prepared to do what, what, what the Sunnah has established. None of you. And he's adamant about that. Why not? None, none, none. A six-year-old child. We say no. Now, now, Sheikh Hussein is going to give you a reason, the reason why that this is so deplorable. This is this is so disgusting, this idea of taking a six-year-old child to wed. Let's, let's listen to what he says. That hadith is in conflict with the Quran. Ah, that hadith is in conflict with the Quran, but is it? Is it? Because in Surah 65 of the Quran, verses 1 to 4, it gives regulations there about what to do if you take a divorced woman as a wife. You have to you have to have the idda period. You have to, there's a waiting period. You have to wait for three months before you take her as wife. Why? In case she's pregnant by her ex-husband. And and what do you do with women who are post uh postmenopausal? Well, you're supposed to also wait three months just in case they may be pregnant from their former husbands or from their dead husbands or from or from or or waiting three months to see if the period comes back or not. Um, and then it mentions in those who have not yet reached menses, those who have not menstruated. Well, the only females that don't menstruate are children, pretty best children. So is that hadith in conflict with the Quran? I mean, if you look at Ibn Kathir's commentaries on uh, commentary, his tafsir on Surah 65, if you look at my video with uh, Zaykar Naik in the Age of Aisha, I, I cover that in that video. Um, uh, he makes it very clear that, the, that, that you can take females who have not yet menstruated. Well, who are the females that have not menstruated but, but children? Fabricated. Wow. So he says it's in conflict with the Quran. I don't think it is based on Surah 65, 1 to 4. But then he says that hadith is fabricated. Well, if it's fabricated, then why uh, why is it sahih? Why is it uh, sound? Why is it not daif, weak? Secondly, who would fabricate a story like that? Who would fabricate a story like that unless someone who wanted to justify taking little girls to wed and so they they made the story of muhammad marrying um a child marrying aisha at six but then why would someone fabricate a story like that it's 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 it, it almost sounds um so impossible when we consider the criterion of, of embarrassment we would look at that and say no it, it sounds like since it's so embarrassing, it must be true. Why would someone make such an embarrassing story up about Muhammad marrying a child? That is so embarrassing that the likelihood of that of that being made up is is next to nil. And so how's it fabricated? How's it fabricated when it's been regarded as Sahih? Uh, Aisha died when uh, when Muhammad died in 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 six thirty two AD. Aisha was eighteen, which says that, when he married her at six and consummated the marriage at nine, it says she stayed with him for another nine years until his death, which would bring you to 18. So we have a problem here. When the Hadith doesn't seem to agree or doesn't portray a, a fair picture of Muhammad, we, what do we do? We just check it out. But then if that one is Sahih and it's fabricated and we should throw it out, then why not throw the whole thing and become Qurani only? As we see among Islam, there are some Muslims who are Quran only. They only hold to the Quran and they reject the Hadith. And so there, there are Qurani, Quran only Muslims. It's an insult to the Prophet. So it's an insult to the Prophet. 
Yeah, I agree. It is an insult. But it's sahih, it's sound, and Muslims regard Bukhari as the most reliable of the Hadith, next to Muslim and Abu Dawud, and then Ibn Majah. And so, do we play eeny, meeny, miny, mo? This hadith stays, this hadith goes. Well, if that's the case, folks, um, what's the point of, if it's defective, then throw it all out and just hold to the Quran. And if you just hold to the Quran and you reject the hadith, you're going to have some major problems on your hands. Major problems on your hands. Posture of prayer, how many times you pray a day, five times comes from Bukhari about Muhammad's ascent into the heavens and so forth. But this sheikh is saying it's an insult to the prophet. And somebody should take it and throw it in a garbage. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Someone should take Sahih Bukhari and throw it in a garbage bin. Wow. Well, just wondering about my Muslim friends, if you can put your comments into the comment section. What do you think? Do you agree with this, this sheikh? Do you think this sheikh is right? that the story of Muhammad taking Aisha at six and marrying her at nine is a fabrication and that it should be thrown out. It's in conflict with the Quran and it should be thrown out in a garbage bin. Do you agree with that? Or do you disagree? Oh, Imran Hussein is controversial now. If I don't use his violent language, no one will wake up. Yeah, and he's absolutely right. If he doesn't use this type of language, no one's going to wake up. But... Facts are facts. Facts are facts. And so we seem to have to be, we seem to be in a situation that 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 Islam is, is in a it's in a it's in a it's between a, a rock and a hard place. So what do you do? Do you check out all the hadiths of Heel Bukhari? Well, if you do that, well then you're gonna be throwing a lot of a lot of information and a lot of the so-called traditions that are, are still followed today, and you're going to throw out um, uh, things related to prayer um, and so on. Um, and and the only option you have is 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 to be Quran only. So why is there so much division in the Ummah, in the Islamic community, over this Hadith about Aisha? Well, I think common sense will tell you there's something wrong with taking a child at that age. And so here now you have a an imam <clears throat> who basically said that um, if if the hadith is in conflict with the Quran, then you should throw it out. And uh, my friend uh, Shabir Ali as well in, in some of our former debates, uh, when I brought up the hadith about Muhammad being in the cave and being attacked by a spirit being, and then, and then he became suicidal, he thought he was demon-possessed and so forth, um, Shabir just said those hadith are 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 against the Quran, and therefore um, uh, we can ignore them. We 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 don't trust them, but they're sahih, they're sound. And so, what are we finding here? Well, we're finding here the 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 foundations are cracking. The foundations are cracking. And so, I'll leave it. I'll leave it to you to look at the evidence for yourself. Um, but when Muslim imams are getting to the point where they're saying, we should just throw this out, this is something that insults Muhammad, we should throw it out. We we are now in, in a situation and in a place where the most authentic tradition, Sahil Bukhari, is now become suspect. And, and so these are very interesting days in which we're living. And I think the evidence, I think the critique of the West has pressed and pinned a lot of our Muslim friends to the wall on this question. And so I hope uh, you have found this video interesting and uh, I trust that uh, you will uh, share this video and like it with others. And, uh, and also, if you have not done so already, we encourage you to subscribe to the channel. It's absolutely free. Well, thanks again, folks, for joining and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next time. God bless.